G'day. For some time I've been wanting to make a clip about scaling off photographs and all that sort of thing. Basically when you're drawing something, uh, and you know, this is similar to something that I was looking at, um, the best way is if you've got a dimension drawing. Uh, and so someone sat down, they've measured, uh, well, either measured up or, or, or annotated everything that you need to know. The next best is when you've got, um, you know, pictures of the, of the part, uh, with a scale next to them in all three um, you know dimensions uh, and that's uh, that that helps because you can then just sort of compare straight to the scale to the part and work it out that way the third way that that we do these things is using pictures and that can be a little bit of a problem because you may not have all the dimensions and so there are some some tricks to doing that uh, and before anybody says oh this is easy um, I've had decades of experience starting out with manual drawing uh, to be to, to know some of the, the rules that apply to this so it's not as, as straightforward as it may first seem. The thing that set me off down this path was this picture uh, and this is of a, a dividing head uh, indexing plunger uh, but as you can see it's it's broken. This is the end result from that uh, exercise and so I'll show you how I, I dimension that up and there's a, a few tips on how to make something like that up if you if you find yourself in that um, need but uh, it's turned out rather well uh, it certainly looks like the original so I'm, I'm happy with that. This was the starting point this looks like it's made out of a, uh, a die cast material probably a zinc alloy uh, not known to be terribly strong easy to um, produce it's a low melting point alley alloy once they break you know you, you can't really do much with them and you and you can possibly just see there's some signs of cracking in there too so uh, that's another thing that I find with this sort of alloy is that um, after a while it tends to to want to disintegrate the basics are there it's a it's a plunger, it's a spring-loaded plunger I'll tell you why in a moment with a, uh, a handle with a loop on it now one of the nice things about the web is that you can find all sorts of information on it. So this is actually an exploded parts diagram for an EMCO unit and I've started doing some things on it. One of the things that I, I looked on the web uh, for was what's the diameter of this table and it turns out that it's 150 millimeters 6 inches uh, and that's that's very handy. The other thing you can do here is you can see there's nice straight lines on the side of that and I've transferred that across here and I've also then taken a line on that angle and gone across that um, turntable through the centre line, worked out how big that is and transferred that back. So it turns out in, in, in terms of scale that that being 150 millimetres in diameter is, is the equivalent of 24 millimetres on the page. Now down here you'll see that there's a disc. I've put a vertical line through the centre line, I've put a horizontal line or horizontal in terms of the, um, the, the the table here measured them and they're both the same size now this is important because sometimes drawings like this you don't get them scaled someone's gone and decided I need to fit that on a page and they've, they've scrunched it in so this is a this is an important thing it means that the scale um, this way and this way and this way is all the same given that that's the part we're interested in down there and I can now start measuring that up and so typically what I'll do is I'll measure that the height there and say okay well that's that's four millimeters um, four, four divided by 24 is uh, what is four divided by 26 right one sixth one sixth of that is whatever and that gives me a measurement now that's not foolproof but it's a good starting point for getting dimensions this is the next bit I've gone through and measuring on you know those axes and, and scaling um, I've come up with a, a sketch of basically what I think it's going to look like scaling those dimensions off now if this were an imperial part I'd be saying 90 millimeters that's probably three quarter inch 12.5 uh, that's probably a half inch uh, six millimeters that's probably quarter inch all that sort of thing because designers when they do these things like uh, for want of a better term round numbers okay um, MCO is Swiss uh, and the, the design is probably metric so you know that 16 millimeters there is 16 millimeters is not five eighths um, 
doesn't have to be. I mean, sometimes designers will will pick a dimension for certain reasons, and so therefore you, you you're stuck with it. But when sort of scaling a part off a drawing like this, you know, you can look at that and make a few guesses. You know, is is that sixteen or is it five eighths and all that sort of thing. Now, this is also where that photo comes in again. And, and if you can blow these up so that they are, are life size, it really helps. Because what you can also do then is say, well, you know, I'm saying that that diameter there is 12 and a half. Uh, and so I can then use that to work out, well, what's that diameter? What's that height? Um, this is actually fortunately twisted. And so you can get a bit more detail as well, you know, that's that's almost a full radius there and, and, and you know, the thickness there is this and the thickness, you know, height is that. Uh, and so having lots of photos of these things does come in really handy. Once I've got those dimensions, um, if it's a part that, you know, might have some aesthetics to it that I need to worry about, what I will do is draw that out in my CAD package. This is just an AutoCAD thing. Um, if you've got access to a 3D modeling package, then you can model it up and just check that it all looks right. But in this particular case, I know there are some, some scallops here where that width is reduced. And I wanted to find out, well, okay, where's the center of my radius there? And how's that going to work? Because I'm gonna to have to set this up on a rotary table to, to do the, um, the machining. Uh, and so, this is this is really a check. Uh, if this this is this is six millimeters, but I think I originally started off with this being something like twelve, which would mean three millimeters either side. Now that makes that remarkably weak. So I, I took that out to sixteen, and that's the problem with trying to scale off small drawings. Um, you, you've got this problem that you know if if a line is halfway between two marks on the ruler, which way is it? Um, and is a distortion. I've pre-shaped my block here. Uh, that's that's going to be the, the, the tab which does the work. These need to be rounded off and so I'm going to set that up on the rotary table like that using my uh, microscope to get the crosshair centered and then I'll put a radius on here. Now you could do that for the lathe except for one particular bit so I'm going to uh, not do it on the lathe um, and so yeah just set that up on the rotary table uh, offset the cutter, run that round until I get the, the round there, turn it over and repeat on this side. I've machined the, the, uh, the spigot on the bottom, um, flipped the part over and then machined the spigot on the top. Now this is the reason I couldn't do this part in the lathe was that I now want to put basically a half round plus a little bit back that way on both sides here. So I've, I've got that surface square to the, the column, noted the reading, plus or minus 90 degrees and that should give me the, the amount that I can um, very carefully take off. Once I've done that I can finish the part off in the lathe and the, and the, and the main uh, so apart from the, the slot in here, of course. The main thing that I need to do in the lathe is, is put a hole in there uh, for the, uh, the plunger arrangement. There's my uh, spigot. I've now done both ends. I've got a slight mismatch here. Um, I didn't quite have the, the center position on here marked um, that was you know, directly opposite that. And I think that's because uh, you may not be able to see. There's a couple of extra marks there, which, which uh, I may have picked the, the wrong one. I'm only 0.2 of a millimeter out radially, so that's that's not a big deal. I'll, I'll dress that up with a file and uh, think of things that might have been. So if I know I'm not doing too badly, I've managed to, to, uh, to blend that in. Uh, I've put the, the slot in there for uh, attaching to the table. Now I have to work on the latch part. Now that's actually a little bit tricky. This is what it actually, how, how it actually works. There's a spring in here and as you pull back on the handle, the plunger comes in and the indexing wheel, uh, you know, you're not, you're not engaged in the indexing wheel, you can index. So what I've got to do is, is find a spring which is going to be smaller than the diameter of the plunger, which is around about 9, 10 millimetres. Uh, counterbore the housing for that so that the shaft on the end of the spring can go in there and you act as a guide while the spring pushes the, 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 uh, the plunger that way. To cut the smaller uh, shaft my retractable pin 
It's, it needs to be about 30 millimeters long and um, using this and it's it's 5.5 diameter so using the 3 to 1 rule I'm way over but I'm using an old trick which is basically do you three times your length so I'm doing around about 15 millimeters down to size and then do the next bit uh, and then uh, you know if you need to do a do a final finishing cut on on size which is basically just a skim cut and uh, that seems to be working reasonably well I've made the plunger. Uh, I haven't put a point on it yet because I want to try it and just see where it sits and all that sort of thing, but it, it goes in and out of the housing um, to not, without too many problems. I'm now doing the handle that goes over the top. Now, as I normally do, I've, I've, I'm leaving the internal detail till I put the outside knurl on. Um, this is a, because it's a straight knurl, it's basically you have to push into it. Uh, it's not a nice thing to do uh, for a small lay that it, it sort of um, uh, plays havoc with bearings apparently. Um, but this is, once again, scaled off the, uh, the picture I have of the handle. I can't recall whether I've uh, shown this on YouTube before, but this is the setup I have for getting uh, holes into, uh, you know, cylindrical items and getting them on the center line. And it works reasonably well. What it is is basically it's a couple of, of V blocks which I got somewhere, can't even remember where, uh, and I've made up a, a shallow tray which allows them to slide back and forth. In the chuck here, I've got a, a 90 degree, or a, yes, it's a 90 degree cone that matches the V block, and I can put that in there and bring that down with these T nuts loosened off. I centralize the cone in the V-block and then tighten those up and basically the axis of that uh, V should intersect the axis of the, the spindle. To secure the plunger to the, the handle here, um, I've drilled a two millimeter hole down there. I've got some two millimeter split pins. Um, and so what I've done is I've, I've drilled a hole through this. This is some, some uh, softish material. Uh, I think it's some 1214. Uh, so it's a, a, a free machining type um, steel. I suspect this is probably stainless. So what I've done is I've, I've drilled a hole through there and that's going to act as a bit of a drill guide for me. Uh, and then I'm going to, uh, and, and I'll, I'll have that in there, drill through and either just, you know, mark it uh, or preferably drill all the way through and uh, that way I can then put my, my roll pin in. I'm about to uh, put this all together. Um, for a start it's, it's difficult getting these things started so what I've done is I've, I've just uh, knocked the pin in until it's just about ready to engage in the hole uh, and so that's a, that's a good tip to start with. The other thing I've done is I've put a texture mark on the, on the plunger which lines up with the hole. And so I can, when that's in there, I can rotate that round till I get those lined up and that way I'll know that I'm in about the right spot and that will certainly help me. The last thing I'm gonna do here is because I've got a spring involved, uh, I'm going to assemble all this and then put a G clamp over the top to hold it all together so that I don't have to worry about trying to, you know, with my fingers, keep that bit aligned and keep it pushed up and all compressed and all that sort of thing so um, that's how I do these things and uh, it's it's a, a couple of, of, of worthwhile things in there. Here it is the, the finished product uh, it uh, springs quite nicely in fact I've had this apart uh, three times uh, the first time I, I put it together and thought maybe a bit of lubricant would help the second time I decided the spring was too stiff and so I found a uh, a smaller spring and uh, popped it together and so yes uh, there it is that'll that'll do the job nicely I think it, it's it's got a nice pull to it it's not too awful um, you can see there there's a little bit of a mark there where the um, the uh, you know the mismatch in those diameters was but th I think you know this being aluminium that'll that'll wear off soon enough and it's only um, oh, it's, it's, it's even disappearing now um, so, you know, that'll, that'll do the job quite nicely, I think. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.